Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. So welcome to today's episode where we address a question that we hear all the time. Are you ever too old to start making art? Now, normally we'd start by talking about what you've all been up to this month, but we can't actually do that this time because um, by the time this airs, I'm going to be in Cuba. So Tara and I, we had to be really well prepared, didn't we, Tara, to get this episode recorded much earlier than we would normally. Um, In fact, we haven't quite reached New Year's Day yet. But one thing I just want to mention before we go on is we got a really lovely review um, recently on iTunes for this podcast. And I want to say thank you so much to Kate513940, who apparently enjoys listening to us while she does her ironing. (laughs) (laughs) So she gave us a glowing review and it's always really nice when someone takes the time to do that. So thank you. Um, Anyway, Tara, what is going on with you? Well, you know, this episode is about being too old to make art. It was my birthday, so I might be too old now. So I'm Happy year older. Happy birthday. No, don't. To you. No. Um, so, what else has been going on? We've had Christmas, and I started just before Christmas, I started filming some of my Kick and Creatives videos. And you would not believe how much I procrastinated on these. You know how we always say, like, we, we encourage people to just start. Well, yeah. I, didn't. I didn't just start <laughs> everything had to be perfect and then I guess I was so scared then to mess it up because everything else was kind of right but it's so weird because once you actually start doing something it all it's so much better isn't it is you kind of reach over that hurdle and I felt so much better after I'd uh, after I'd recorded something but there was a slight snag that you have to make sure your hair's tidy <laughs> But I looked and actually, even though I tidied my hair, it's not actually tidy on the video. So I apologise for that. Um, I also did some sketching. I was doing some, I think I mentioned this before, some live drawing type sketching. So I've been doing some really quick ones, just like 60 second gesture drawings. So from so- from what? The, the internet? Yeah, there's, there's a site that sort of feeds you one photograph after the next. And Is I was just cr- using that. Is it Croquet Cafe? No, I have used that before, but this one's just still photos. Oh, okay. And I think I mentioned it in the last podcast, but I com- it completely slipped my mind what it was called. But if you just search for live drawing poses, mm. it was one of the first ones that came up in Google. Yeah, because there's another one, isn't there? Artist Academy or something. Yeah, these are just <coughs> still photos. Yeah. And you could choose, do you want man or woman, clothed or not clothed? Mm. Um, and obviously I picked all men. Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> I think I think mix, and then it just you can choose your time. So then it just holds the photo up for that amount of time that you say. So I was doing sixty second ones. So yeah, that was good. The perks but, of being an artist. <laughs> yeah. well, what about you? Uh yeah. Well, as I said before, by the time this airs, I'm going to be on holiday in Cuba, um, but I'm not there yet, and I've got loads and loads of packing to do, which is actually quite exciting. But what's nice is that I finished my latest painting, as I said I would, before Christmas, so I've now got plenty of time to ponder on what to paint when I get back, and I've got a pretty good idea, I think, of what that's going to be already, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and I'm going to do some sketching out there as well, so that should be fun. And um, yeah, so that's it really, because obviously Christmas, I mean, you don't get a chance to do much else, do you? It's all pretty hectic. Yeah, well, you have made some videos, haven't you, as well? Oh, yeah, I've been starting on, yeah, because I was procrastinating a bit as well, to be honest, because, um, well, I I got that new camera, didn't I? And then I was trying to figure out ways of doing an overhead shot without spending a fortune on a big boom, you know, the boomy things and and then I didn't really know what the settings... I mean, these videos, <laughs> they're either going to be absolutely terrible <laughs> or, or not. I don't know. But no, we, we've tested it out a bit, haven't we? And I sent you some of my footage yesterday and you you seemed to think that was quite good, didn't you? Well, the, I actually preferred the... Do you remember the ones we did just to each other? Yeah. The, fun, the funny videos. <laughs> which we, we may eventually release maybe in April <laughs> or something. We'd have April. To April yeah. Fool's Day. April Fool. <laughs> we have to do a lot of beeping on those, though. But they were, beeping they were very and, funny. Beeping and blurring, I think. Yeah. 
<laughs> but anyway, in today's episode, we are talking about whether you're ever too old to start making art. And the simple answer to that question is no. So that's it. We'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> That was a quick one. <laughs> that was a really quick one, wasn't it? No, but seriously, it's a question that I've heard so many times from people wondering if they've left it too late to learn. And I've got to say, I remember wondering the same thing when I started because I didn't start taking art seriously at all until I was in my early 30s. And even then, I wondered if I'd missed out on too much learning time. But it's funny because now at the age of um, 47, I look back and think, wow, I was really young. But at the time, you feel like, you're really old, don't you? It's, it's funny. So th- the more time goes on, the more you realise how young you were when you thought you weren't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see people online, not necessarily talking about art. I see someone and they say, I'm 25, I don't like my career. Am I too old to change? I know, you think, oh my <laughs> God. I know. I'm still in nappies. <laughs> so so why, why did it take you so long then? If you, if you wanted to do it, why did you wait till you're 30? And how long was it until you felt, you know, you were good at it? Uh, okay, well, first of all, I liked drawing and everything like that, but I just didn't think of it as something, I don't know, I just used to do it every now and then for fun. I never really sort of took it serious. And I had children early as well, so it just didn't really enter my head. I was always very creative in the fact that I'd do things like flower pressing and you know, I, I tried to write a, a novel once and things like that. So I had it in me and I did like drawing. I used to do the old funny sketches, you know, but I never thought for a minute it would be something I'd ever taken seriously at all. But then one day, I don't know what it was, but one day, I mean, it's a whole new episode that, but basically I got the bug. I got the bug and I think I was about 32, something like that maybe. And I thought, I, I really, really want to do this. And it just gripped me. It was really strange. And I do think that it's already in there, but something made me tap into it. Do you know what I mean? So was there one piece that you did, you thought, this is it, this is what I want to do? Um, do, do you know what? It was funny. I think, the, I think when I started to get the bug was when I did a mural on my daughter's bedroom wall I think she was about uh she was probably about six something like that and I did the whole her whole room I decided to paint the little mermaid do the whole sit like an underwater scene on every single wall and I didn't know it was I didn't know I'd be any good at it I just thought I'd have a go and and I must admit when I when I stood back I thought wow (laughs) I'm actually quite good at this and it was just like normal emulsion paint um but, you know, I'd, I'd copied the characters from her books, but they were just in 2D flat sort of cartoony drawings. And I tried to make mine look really three dimensional and I got really involved in the process. And I was just, I have to say, I was really impressed with myself. I was like, wow, I really, really enjoyed that. And I think that's probably what lit the spark. And then I did um, some murals for my son. And then eventually I, draw, I joined like a little art class. And it just, but it just, there was no one piece particularly, no. Um, but, you know, if I learned anything at all last year, it was that you can be 70 and still have a good 25 years or more ahead of you. Or you can be 45 and only have another five. So none of us know how long we're here for. So if you've always wanted to do something, don't wait. Do it now because you've got nothing to lose. Because I waited. I waited way too long because even when I got that bug, I still procrastinated. Um, I still, you know, I, I bought, I've, I've ta- talked about this many times before when I bought my first sketchbook. And then I, you know, I didn't open it for six months because I was just so worried about, you know, ruining the pages and things like that. And, you know, now I just sort of look back and think, you silly girl, why did you think that, you know, just get on with it. And it, it was just months of wasted time when I could have got better earlier. Do you know what I mean? Um, but as for what you said about how long did it take me to feel competent from when I started I really think that depends on the individual because you know when I first started I didn't think I was very good at it but I wanted it so badly because I just loved that feeling of drawing and painting and I, I think you know how quickly you get better depends very much I think on how badly you want it and how determined you are to learn it and obviously how much effort you put into it and I was really really focused once I got started and it was almost like falling in love and I think you know that's far more valuable than even having a natural talent to begin with 
And the other thing I think it depends on is your ability not to compare your own work to other people's when you first start. Because if you're going to do that, well, then you're just going to make it really hard for yourself to focus. What I think is quite strange, you always said to me that what you wanted to do was you wanted to be able to be a good sketcher, didn't you? You never intended no. becoming a painter. No. Um, and you said that happened because you were almost too scared to do the sketching. It did. You're absolutely right. My What I actually wanted is I just wanted to be someone who sketched all the time and just sketched everything around me but for some reason because I procrastinated in doing sketching I um I was doing intricate drawings and then attempting to paint and doing intricate oil paintings and I ended up doing a lot of well I am an oil painter and funny enough I almost um skip sketching altogether really I think that's funny because that's almost like you're prepared to let that happen no which is good what I mean and, and that some people might start off out and they think well I can't draw that well or I can't do this type of thing but if they actually try something they'll find something else that fits them you know like it yeah. might be absolutely it might not be the thing they initially want to do it's the fear of not being able to do what you want to do obviously I can sketch now um it's still not something that I do you know all the time or anything like that but I think over, certainly over the last sort of five years I've I've definitely got a lot more um into sketching and filled lots of sketchbooks and sketched every day and I'm comfortable doing it now but that it took me a long time to actually finally face that which is strange isn't it well, it's like us procrastinating on the videos, isn't it? It's because you want it so badly to look good. Yeah. That you're you're scared to commit to it in case it doesn't meet your expectations. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I mean, you do get people now that say they, they can't draw and they've got no interest in drawing or painting. And that, that's completely fine. But you've also got people who've never really explored it or practice creating it and they might really want to create but they sort of don't do it or they think they haven't got talent but of course the only way you're going to find that out is to actually give it a go so if you do want to draw or paint you know you can learn it it's something you can do at any age and I think sometimes we just expect to be better at things than, than we should be really really quickly so you know give it a go even if you haven't tried it at school you might have to go back and start at that level again but it's worth picking up a pencil a pen the good thing is you don't even need expensive stuff to do it and just trying I think the thing as well is that you know everyone thinks they don't have talent but the reality is what they're doing is they're picking up a pencil and picking up from where they left off at maybe I don't know 10 years old when they stopped drawing so that that's the sort of hurdle I think a lot of people can't get past they think because they're starting to draw like a 10 year old that they have no talent whereas that's actually not the case at all it doesn't mean you have no talent it just means that you, you you know you've had a big gap and that's where you were at last time you did it but you'd be so surprised on how quickly you can learn you know if you put enough time and effort into it and you want it badly enough it's amazing how quickly you can pick things up. And, you know, I recently read about a man who started uh, painting when he was 90. And at the age of 92, he's just found gallery representation. I mean, how awesome is that? That is amazing. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What sort of stuff was he doing? Do you actually know? I don't. I, I don't. I read about it, but I, I, don't, I know it was paintings, but I don't. Oh, yeah. I, just, I just was blown away, though, that somebody was, you know, at 90 still thought you know yeah I'm gonna I mean, but then again people you know if you look at people like um Mary Berry and all these people that are really really I suppose old they're not anymore really are they it's age at the end of the day age is nothing more than a number it really isn't it's just a number it's all about how you feel and how healthy you are and active you are it's nothing about your age because we all know we can all die at any age do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah well I remember my grandparents they always seemed they seemed old when they were young but then oh. when they were older they seemed much younger if that makes sense they even looked younger when they were older 
That doesn't make any sense whatsoever, does it? No. <laughs> but you see pictures of them. Yeah. And like pictures and set back and they actually looked younger, like yeah. twenty or thirty years later. <laughs> and actually had an attitude that was much younger, which is quite strange. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean we've mentioned before that there are so many different forms of art. And if you're not inspired to try like what you do, like really highly detailed drawings, there might be something else that suits you. I mean, everybody's gone mad in our group, didn't they, for a little while doing the lino cutting and printing. So that's definitely something you could try. Um, And you don't have to be kind of traditionally good at art to do that. It's it's very much can be pattern based and, you know, texture and and that sort of thing. Um, And we've also got people who love collage and abstract art. And, you know, their abstract art is just amazing. And yet they're perhaps not the best at, you know, drawing things that are kind of re- realistic looking. So I think really you just got to experiment, discover what sort of art suits you and don't give up just because you might not feel that, you know, drawing in pencil, really detailed sketches is not your thing. Give it a go. Um, and you might just want to draw or paint purely for fun or for how it makes you feel. There's lots of reasons that people create beyond the idea of becoming this professional artist who sells their work in a gallery. It doesn't matter if you're good, if it makes you happy. Um, You can just sketch or doodle in a notebook if it makes you feel good or keep a journal. You know, like people keep diaries, but visual drawings in there as well. We're doing something similar, aren't we, for January, for our Art Journal January Challenge. You don't even have to share your work if you don't think of any good. But obviously, if you do, you might find you inspire other people. And we've got a lot of people in our group and they find that they feel safe to share there, whereas they might not feel safe to share it, you know, in Facebook as a whole or other where, other places in social media because mm. they know people are kind and they're going to only encourage them rather than, you know, knocking them down. And everyone's got something to offer everyone. I mean, I remember when I first started out, I used to look at a lot of blogs and people used to comment on blogs all the time. And I remember thinking, I can't comment because, you know, who am I to comment? I'm not qualified to, you know, to say anything about anything. Um, But it was quite funny because I had my own blog and people were commenting on mine and they were, they started to ask me questions about, oh, you know, what's, what, Um, brush did you use or how did you do that and I I remember feeling quite amazed that somebody was interested but it was because I was getting better and I didn't realize it at the time and obviously we all start in a certain point and you all get better and everyone is you know better than someone else and it's not about being better probably that's a bad word but more advanced let's say more advanced there's always someone less advanced than you because there's always someone just starting out that you know and you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised at what you have to offer other people. Yeah. Who are we to do a podcast? <clears throat> exactly. We better go. <laughs> <laughs> and You know, there's so many good reasons to make art aside from becoming a professional artist or even just pure enjoyment. Art is actually really, really good for your mental health because it helps to relieve stress. And of course, that promotes relaxation and that in turn can only be good for you physically it's almost like meditating Um, and we hear a lot from the members of our Facebook group about how important art is to their own well-being and we had um, a few we actually heard from a few of them didn't we we heard from Rosie Hartland and Rosie says it's truly therapy for me I started in 2005 when I was in a bad state anxiety wise and we also heard from Kim Hine she said for me personally art keeps me sane it makes my mind stop when it gets too loud. If I'm sad, it takes away the blues. It just stops time and lets me get lost. I would hate not to be able to do art every day. And you know what? I completely get where she's coming from because there's only two things I've ever found in life that make my mind completely relax. One of them is scuba diving and the other is drawing. And- God, I wonder what you were going to say then. <laughs> You always have to drag things down to the gutter, don't you? (laughs) But yeah, that too. I forgot about that. (laughs) Scuba diving is something where, you know, when you're underwater and you're just surrounded by these sharks and amazing, you know, scenery, it's it's just unbelievable. And it's it's almost like you're in another world. And um, it doesn't even matter if I read a novel. My mind is still active and I'm still in the back of my mind thinking of things I need to do the next day. Whereas scuba diving, I don't. It's it's like 
it's like I've completely it's like an out of body experience and and drawing is the same I completely lose myself in that but obviously I can't scuba dive every day so so drawing it is <laughs> <laughs> you go in the bath a lot though don't you oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I often um, you text you long. I text you from the <laughs> bath <laughs> You've yeah. heard from a few, haven't you? Oh, perhaps? yes. Sorry. I've, I've lost <laughs> track. You were um, thinking about me in the bath, weren't you? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually yeah. sent, I sent, I sent you a, um, a photograph, didn't I, of me in the bath the other day. Just head, by the way, covered <laughs> in bubbles under the water. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I remember once, actually, when, when I was out, um, I think I was out walking with Kevin. We were walking the dog. And you sent a message or something like, oh, I was going to Skype you or something from the bath weren't you and then (laughs) I got back home and then you tried to Skype me do you you remember (laughs) or FaceTime me and Kevin insisted in coming in the room (laughs) (laughs) in the bath (gasps) I will just like (laughs) say that it would have been from the neck up (laughs) I wouldn't have subjected you to anything else it's just like the bath is a great place to do things that you don't normally have time to do like no, chat it's really not <laughs> anyway I've got um we had also jo- Jolanta Kedron and she was saying about how art makes her feel and how she started at age of 54 when she hit a bump in her life actually I'm going to read this like it's her because I've got it all written in all I've got to start again so <laughs> Jolanta Kedron she says at the age of 54 I hit a bump in my life and all I lived for and believed in started to crumble into pieces things started to turn ugly and although I didn't realize it at the time I subconsciously wanted to do something pretty I needed something to look forward to I needed to escape from my troubles I honestly think that turning to art saved my sanity I still claim that my new hobby is costly but not only cheaper than therapy but also more pleasant Three years later, all my troubles cleared. I'm as happy as I can be. I can't believe how much my artwork improved. Sometimes I wonder where I would be if I learned it earlier and practiced as hard as I am now. I don't know how much time I have left, so I learn and practice like a maniac. But one advice I would have to anyone who waits for retirement to pursue their dreams is not to wait, just do it. Honestly, all you need is a few art supplies, a little bit of space and a little bit of belief in yourself and a bit of boundaries for your family to guard your time schedule. Another really good reason to make art, if you've always wanted to, is because of how special those things are going to be to the people that you will one day leave behind. So my friend, um, she lost her husband last year, and he was a French polisher, and he also loved art. And when I visit her house, even though he's not physically there, he's kind of still everywhere from the huge painting he did that hangs over their sofa to the countless pieces of furniture that he's made all around the house and I've talked about my uncle Danny before many times um, and he was an artist and also a stonemason and again when you walk into his house you know his presence is just felt everywhere there are paintings all over the walls sculptures he made poems he wrote And somehow these things seem to create a really deep connection to him despite him not being there in the flesh yeah when you lose someone close to you finding something they created could be really special you know imagine finding a handwritten recipe with doodles on the side of it or a sketchbook or an art journal it'd be something you'd really want to treasure and keep to remind you of that person and it wouldn't matter how technically good the drawings were either it would be more the story behind the person that drew it and something to keep and remember them by yeah, absolutely. Um, my mum, she used to dabble with drawing when she was really oh, young. Oh, right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and she really did have a natural talent. It just seemed to, she could kind of just, I remember one day she just drew a profile of a face in one stroke of a pen and it was perfect. <laughs> I was just like, it's such a shame. She just wasn't interested enough to keep it up. But I was going to say, you do you not encourage her? I have tried to encourage her, but she, you just can't force these things. No. You're either into it or you're not. She enjoyed drawing but not enough to keep it up and I if I'm honest I do think that she probably is scared to not be very good now yeah again for a while because it takes practice to get back up to what you had and I think that's probably more it to be honest but you you know what is great is I know that she's kept um quite a few of her drawings and that's something that you know we'll be able to treasure one day but I wouldn't care whether they were brilliantly executed drawings or just chicken scrawl. It's about that physical connection they had with that drawing. 
and and it doesn't even have to be drawings like you said you know it might be a, a handwritten recipe in a scrapbook um might be poetry or sculpture something like that um but those things will always be so much more precious to the people you leave behind than anything else will ever be you know unless you find a wad of cash somewhere <laughs> a million pounds under the sofa <laughs> no you can't put a price on it can you something like a letter or a sculpture or a painting or a poem you just cannot they're priceless they're absolutely priceless more valuable than anything um you know like money do you know what i mean yeah i mean what you're saying as well is everything nowadays is so digital and we haven't even yeah. got any uh, here we haven't even got hardly any digital photographs of anything you know no, take, it's, you don't print them out either do you no you take photos on holiday we've got a load on dropbox um, yeah. And actually, Kevin, for Christmas, I had him a photo book, book printed of when he went to Canada. You know, his dad died just over yeah, a year ago. Yeah. So all pictures of his trip to Canada and then going back to when they come over here and stuff like that. Because although we've got all these photos on Dropbox, he, he's got nothing to physical, you know, very few physical yeah. photos to keep of him. Yeah. It's quite sad. Um, it is. And then, and things like that, they can be passed down through your family you know things that aren't digital i'm talking about when you think about like you say the digital age we're at now handwritten stories or poems or drawings done on paper or in a sketchbook they're becoming more and more rare i mean can you remember the last time you even received a handwritten letter i mean i know when i get one i'm like ooh, a handwritten you letter them. you still get huh? them you ever still get them well no i always get very disappointed because it's usually a handwritten envelope with something really crappy inside like a bill <laughs> So, but I mean, occasionally, very occasionally, yes, I might, my uncle Danny used to write me handwritten letters and, um, and he loved drinking wine. He used to drink red wine and he had a really, um, he had beautiful calligraphy handwriting and obviously, um, you know, he'd start his, he'd start writing these letters to me and he, and you know his writing was just lovely and then the further on the letter went the more and more scrawly it became and then at some point he would say I've been drinking rather a lot of wine <laughs> and and it's just funny I, I love them I've kept them and I've got letters from Rosa Branson I've got letters I've got letters from the 80s from my friends and my sister she used to send me letters from college all the time and all I've right. got all of them I've kept them all and, you know, an email is nothing like the same and nor is a letter that's been typed out. I mean, I always find it really easy to delete an email. But like I say, I've kept all the letters I've ever had. I've kept them. I just cannot throw them away. I don't know why that is. But, you know, in years to come, we'll be finding nothing more than USB sticks everywhere. And technology moves on so quickly that they'll probably be unreadable anyway. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the handwritten and hand drawn and painted things are just so much more precious now, I think, for that reason than they've ever been before. Yeah, I mean I've got stupid little notes from Kevin as well, actually. Not not like, you know, love love notes. <laughs> Do we want to hear them? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're only really, really silly things. Like um say he'd stayed over when I live with mum and dad, say he'd stayed over there and he'd he'd left in the morning and he might have left after or so it'd just be a silly little note saying, you know, just saying See ya, you know, love ya. Just silly little thing. Oh, I've got those. Oh, I know. I'm so romantic. Very, very romantic, really. He's got some that I sent him as well. Really silly. What do they say? Put the bins out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make me dinner. I'll do your hoovering. <laughs> Can you make sure you clean my welly boots? Yes. Stuff like that. <laughs> you are mean. Oh. <laughs> well, you can't deny it. You no, know that he always cleans your welly boots. Yeah, he does clean my welly boots, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, anyway. Nice, <laughs> anyway another thing is when you're older you've got more life experience to draw on so you've you've seen a lot more and you've got a lot more that you could put into your art if you want to more than say a perhaps a younger artist and when you get older you're more likely to have the confidence to do things I think you're less worried about complying with what's happening like following the trends and that sort of thing like a younger artist might do and also I think you're I think you could become a little bit less self-conscious I don't know about you yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Well, I, I definitely think... do, the things you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think the hardest part about getting older, I think, must probably be when after years of raising kids or working or whatever you do, suddenly you find yourself not doing anything <laughs> because you're retired. And, and I think 
that's when a lot of people feel like, like they kind of lack a purpose. But the reality is that this is the very time when you can start revisiting who you really are again, and giving yourself some time to do the things you love to do. And it's so often the case, I think, that people's mental and physical health declines after retirement because, you know, they don't just stop moving around so much, but they also don't have to think about so much either. Um, it's so important to remember this when, you know, when you've got more to offer than ever because at last you've got the time to do this stuff you know it's funny because um Paul and I were talking about this the other day because obviously it's been Christmas time hasn't it and we haven't worked over Christmas we took a couple of weeks off and I I'm I'm sure every single day about three times a day I kept saying to him what day is it (laughs) what day is it (laughs) it was so funny I just couldn't fathom I still do you know what I don't even know what day it is today Sunday. what day is it Sunday is it Sunday yeah it's Sunday you see yeah. it's because I'm not working no. I have no clue what day it is but when you've retired and that must be what it's like all the time <laughs> you're just like every day is the same well I don't know though because but... my mum and dad seem to be busier than they ever were now they're yeah. retired but, but I think because they have they tend to do something like every day but even if it's only for a few hours so yeah that kind of like fills their time yeah I mean I think like now when I'm off I think how on earth do I find the time to work (laughs) I have no clue how I fit it in I just do not know but yeah when you're retired that's when you've got the most to offer I think because you've got that time and and art is also supposed to be really good for your brain because it keeps you thinking and the other day I read that it can also improve your memory oh it can hasn't improved mine much yet (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> at the same time that also applies to you know writing or other creative things it all keeps your brain working and new cognitive research i'm gonna sound very clever here out of germany suggests that the production of visual art improves effective interaction between parts of the brain the study conducted on a small population of newly retired individuals concludes that making art could d- delay or even negate age-related decline of certain brain functions which is amazing I think that is amazing, but it doesn't surprise me at all. It really, really doesn't. Especially when you're, you know, when you're drawing, you have to remember things, don't you? It's like, and now I can, I can quite happily draw a face from my imagination and I can happily draw a, a figure from my imagination. And that all means that I've remembered somehow in the process of, you know, practicing loads of figures and loads of faces that I, I know how to go about doing it and that's all about memory isn't it and also i think it's exercising your memory if, if you sketch or something outside like say i went outside and sketched a building you're doing much more observation than you would if you just stood there and looked at it don't you because yeah. you have to look at all the intricate bits like how many window panes it's got and stuff like that and you really wouldn't go into things in such detail so you would just take a, almost a, a glance yeah. in like a snapshot normally mm. Do you know that Monet didn't stop painting seriously until he was in his 40s after his wife died? No, I didn't. Um, no. Edward Hopper, he didn't start painting until his 30s and he wasn't recognised at all until he was in his 40s. And um, Cézanne, he didn't get accepted into art school and he had absolutely no recognition whatsoever until he was in his 40s. Did you know that Monet, apparently the looser style in his older age, was apparently attributed to his failing eyesight? I don't know. Yeah, it was his cataracts, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. And some of that is people loved that work because it was so loose. I I loved his work that he did with his cataracts more than I did what he did before. I, there was something about the quality of the light. I don't know what it was, but I, to me, he got better. Well, maybe worse. maybe it's because I guess that's what he could see more light and dark yeah. and, and just odd shades of colour. I guess. Yeah. But that might sound quite young if you're 60 plus, but that doesn't mean you can't do the same thing. And back then, when those artists were alive, most people didn't live that long, not as long as they do now anyway. And when people buy painting, they don't care the age of the artist. They just care that they like the work and it will fit in on their wall wherever they want to put put it. So really, age doesn't come into it at all. Oh, no. I mean, there's, there's literally no age limit to start at all. And there, you can go on until, you know, the day you die. You just don't, you never have to stop. You know, you, you can start with hardly any materials at all. Just a simple biro or a pencil and a notebook will do. So there's a really low barrier to entry that means that anyone can give it a try. And it's not even necessary to go to art school, not at all. And sometimes that can even hinder an artist. Um, 
talented self-taught artists taken equally as serious as those who went to art school and there are so many other ways you can learn and develop now I mean aside from a foundation course in art I'm mostly self-taught myself and um and actually I think that's allowed me to learn what I most want to do and what I'm most interested in and, and it meant I could cut out all of the stuff that I wasn't interested in I mean I know that <clears throat> I've spoken to friends um, who've been to art school before and it's really I mean don't get me wrong there's a lot of good in it but I know um, one of the things that a friend of mine had to do is walk down Brighton Beach and collect litter and then make a sculpture out of the litter which is great and I, a really creative thing to do but I just know that I'm not going to do that so I don't really want to <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to spend my time learning that stuff because I know what I want. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it depends whether you know your direction or not. I think where oh. it's good is if you don't know your direction, perhaps. Yeah. And Absolutely. Although it didn't necessarily point me in the right direction, but it also does expand your mind a little bit. But I think when you're older, you more know what direction yeah, you want to go in. Do. When you're young, you don't. Yeah. You? You're, you're just so confused about what you want to do. When it's like It's like anything, isn't it? I mean... If I turn the clock back now, I quite often ask these questions to people, you know, if you could turn the clock back to when you were leaving school now, what would you have chosen to do as your job? And they almost always say something entirely different than what they're doing because they didn't know. When you're young, you just don't know what you want to do. And, and it's way too young to start deciding what you want to be when you're 15, 16. It's just ridiculous, but you have to. And most of the time, people end up doing something that they really don't want to do. And, you know, when you're older, I do think you kind of know yourself more. You know what you want. Not so sure I think I it's actually... <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you, you know more now than what more. you did a couple I, of years ago. I know ago. more now, yeah, than it, like a year. Yeah, even a year ago when we first started yeah. doing this. Yeah. So it only took 48 years. <laughs> And I think even people like me who do go to art school learn more about their craft when they're actually doing it for a living or for themselves and they do actually art school. It doesn't teach you everything about art. It definitely doesn't teach you how to paint traditionally like like you wanted no. to learn. Or to be honest, even that much, how to draw. It's... I think it teaches you how to, to think creatively yes, more than anything, I do doesn't too. it? Yeah, I think that's definitely it. More More than learning how to draw or how to paint or anything like that it's it's more how to think I think um, yeah but now you can you can learn so easily either cheaply or free and uh, there are literally millions of art tutorials on YouTube totally for free you just have to be careful what you're trying to learn from and I know you had this problem didn't you when you were looking at videos you've looked before and thought well that's totally wrong how they're teaching yeah you do have to be a little bit um selective of the, the videos you you watch because I think you must be referring to when I was watching a video on oil yeah I can't oil remember painting, it was oil painting and this particular person was saying you know um I I've run out of oils um, but I'm just going to go over this bit I've got some acrylics and she was painting over the oils with acrylics now you cannot do that because oils are really flexible and acrylics will just not they won't adhere so that it would just flake off you can paint oils over acrylics but you cannot do it the other way around and, and I, I'd i already learnt that I knew that and that was the moment when I thought wow you know I really need to be careful what I'm listening to here so I liked videos more for watching how people applied paint and how people moved their pencil and that kind of thing but I was very careful when listening to things like that yeah yeah, that, that they really did know what they were talking about because some people don't and that's the only issue um, I have with YouTube is that anybody can make a YouTube video it doesn't necessarily mean they know what they're talking about no I mean I've been watching some of the ones that you you found actually recently you know the guy called Proco oh he's fantastic so isn't good he? yeah I mean definitely we're gonna have a, I've got a I really want to approach him actually and get him on the show um next year I think we just need to start mentioning him every show then don't we yeah. <laughs> but, but he's if anybody wants to go have a look he teaches like the basics of drawing he does also do um paid courses but he's got a lot of free stuff on youtube and he teaches you different methods for sort of drawing faces um how to do gesture drawings i was watching some of his on sort of gesture drawings they were quite good um but yeah he's definitely worth checking out uh, but the... yeah and that's by the way it's that's p-r-o-k 
Proko, I think, isn't it? Yeah, and I think you Proko. can also um, get a, get a good idea, not always, but how how good someone is by well, obviously the number of followers. So it doesn't necessarily mean that someone with not many followers hasn't you know is not good it's just they might not have got to that level yeah. yet and not have yeah. got, got themselves out there but um i think you have to be more careful when it is about things like mediums how to use mediums yeah. and oils and things like that i think that's where you've just got to be a bit more careful yeah i mean it doesn't hurt as well i like to mix it up because i wouldn't want to watch just a tutorial from one person because i think yeah. you can learn different ideas from loads of different people so you might watch one thing and you might think well that's that's not really going to work for me because I, I don't like that method or I've tried that. It doesn't work. But you watch someone else yeah. and it sort of clicks. Yeah, Definitely for yeah. me anyway. And there's also places like Udemy, Skillshare, Sketchbook School and Craftsy. They've got a wealth of different courses. I mean, I love Skillshare. You do have a little bit of the same problem that you've got different people of all different levels again. But I, you know, I have a yearly membership to them. And then you can just watch anything, anything that's on there. They're great that's of course if you like watching videos because i know some people aren't that keen on learning that way P different people like learning different ways but of course there's loads of art books out there in charity books charity shops you can sometimes pick them up for pennies i bought a couple the other day i think they're like 50p in a pound or something um and then if you've got fairs sorry boot fairs my mum loves the boot oh, fair yeah. and every now and then she comes back with an armload of of books yeah and it's lovely. Some of them are, are, are really great because they're out of print now and they're really good. Others I just, I, I know and I've had and I don't need. But, mo you know, you, she every now and then she finds a little gem or her or my dad, they'll find a little gem and it's great. Yeah, I mean, the couple I bought from the charity shop, they weren't that great. But there'll be odd things that I'll probably refer back to and have a look at. And if you've only spent mm. that much, it, it doesn't matter if you take a bit of, take a bit of a whim and, you know, try them, does it really? They can yeah. always end up being yeah. in your collages. <laughs> If they're <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah that's good that's a really good idea <laughs> of course some people still got the old libraries as well haven't they i i know yeah. a lot of them close oh. in but yeah we've got one here yeah yeah i don't think i've ever been in it oh, i remember i remember oh. as a kid it used to be great we used to have a little really little library in the village but you used to be able to order books i don't know if you can still do this from libraries but you'd go in and say you'd seen this book that you really fancied they might not have it in their library but you'd be able to order it and they'd get it from another library for you so you get all sorts and actually a library would be a really good place to sketch people because everyone's got to be quiet and sit that's down that's true yeah you know they're not moving around they're just reading but isn't that another episode yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's let's talk about that in another episode it it might have you finished oh, no, were you going to say something say else magazines as well because of course um there's loads of art magazines out there we wrote an article um, a few months ago, didn't we, for Leisure Painting Magazine. Yeah. So they have loads yeah. of inspiration. They also show you how to use different mediums and stuff like that. So they're worth a look as well. Oh, and art groups. Exactly. Most most towns or cities have art groups as well. Well, you know, that's how I started, really. When I got that, you know, yearning to, to draw again, I thought, I, I mean, I know I could draw a bit, but I, well, I could draw, but I was really, really out of practice, really out of practice. Um. And I joined a local art class, which used to run on a Wednesday afternoon for two hours. And that is how I started. Um, and I'll tell you what, it's that was great. Really, really, really great. And I remember one of the things I learned. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just dropped. I just. I didn't even know it was on there. My mobile phone was actually sitting oh, on my no. lap. It just, slid, it just slid off. No, it's oh. fine. It, it's fine. It's bounced. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. What uh, was about going to this art group and how... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she taught me something in that art group and it just stayed with me. It was a really good sort of way of teaching and she was talking about tone. I know we're going a bit off plot here, aren't we? <laughs> but I'll really, really quickly say there was this sort of like a coffee or a tea room off of this hall where we were learning. And the door was ajar and behind this door was a fridge and the actual door was painted black. And she came over to me and she said, what colour is that door? And I said, black. And she said, what colour is that fridge? I said, white. And she said, OK, I'm going to ask you to study that fridge and that door and I'm going to come back in 10 minutes. And I'm going to ask you again. So she did. And meanwhile, I was looking at it thinking, well, a fridge is white and a door painted black is black. I just it, it wasn't registering me what she was trying to say yeah. and when she came when I, when I was really looking I was thinking well mind you saying that it's not really white is it because the, 
the way the sun was hitting the door, it was bouncing, the, the light was bouncing so strongly off of part of the door that it was actually really white. And the fridge was behind the door and was almost black. The, the black door was lighter than the white fridge. And it was just that demonstration. It was that simple demonstration of something and the penny dropped and I understood tone. And I just, it was like, yeah, it was a really, really good bit of advice. And that was just a little local art group. And I'll tell you what, that really taught me a lot, that did. Did you study the yeah. contents of the fridge? No, there's nothing oh. in it. It's a bit, a bit of oh. milk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be that you just loved art as a kid. But like me, you just stopped creating when you were younger. And there could be lots of reasons for that. Maybe you just lacked the time because you had kids or a, a job um, or other commitments that you might have had. Or, or maybe you were just discouraged to pursue it because back then it really wasn't considered a worthy or reliable career. Or maybe you just didn't think you were good enough. Or perhaps harsh criticism by a teacher put you off. And we all know there's a lot of that that goes on. I know recently in our group we had a lot of people, didn't we, talk about how a teacher at school really put them off art school with... Um, unconstructive criticism and it was only years later that some of them decided to give art a go again which I think is such a shame yeah it's amazing how many people that actually applied to as well wasn't it it's was terrible yeah I mean we were saying about how maybe you're a bit older now and your kids are at school and you've got more time and Kim Hine from our Facebook group said I started when Will started school in 2007 I was having children withdrawals and needed something new to focus on besides the house I signed up for a pastel class because the watercolour class had 12 months waiting list behind me, 12 months, and I needed to get out of the house or I'd drown. The pastels teacher said, we don't do animals or people, basically only because he did landscapes. He handed me a calendar page, the Cliffs of Mohar, I hope I've said that right, in Ireland, which did not inspire me at all. I said, well, I'll just try. I painted a pelican I'd taken from a photo at the zoo. It'd been a great day and had happy memories. And he offered to buy my pelican piece. Ha. Huh. Oh, wow. I know. <laughs> he says, don't tell me don't or can't because I will show you I can. Oh, that's so, what a great story. I love is. her attitude yeah. as well. Kim's got yeah, a brilliant absolutely. attitude. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. When a teacher is trying to teach you to paint like they do, that's something you've got to watch out for a bit because I had that as well. And you want to develop your own style. You don't want to copy. You want to learn from someone, but you don't want to copy them. Yeah, you know I don't I mean. think there's anything wrong with someone saying, give this a go. But I don't that, think they yeah. should stop you from doing what you feel is right as well. Yeah, experimenting. Yeah. And then they can sort of give you yeah. pointers of where, you know, what's good about it and what's not, you know. I mean, when I first started drawing seriously, I remember going to um, that that class and it was only once a week, as I said. Um, and But I was in my early 30s and yet I was by far the youngest one there. And I remember being really surprised by that. And I think people just seem to have this perception, don't they, of artists being these kind of young, hip type people. But that really isn't the case at all. And it's funny because at my local pub, there's a painting that hangs on the wall of the landlord and I painted it. <laughs> and um, and, the, and the amount of people that have said to me in that pub, but you don't look like an artist. <laughs> and I think, well, what does an artist look like? And it really makes me chuckle. But um, yeah, I, do you know, any, engaging in any kind of art, it can really enrich your life beyond what you could ever imagine. And I know that I just could not imagine my life without it now. And I think everyone needs an interest outside of work and home life, no matter what your age, and even more importantly, after the kids have left home. And, you know, if you're retired, you might also find that you've got more time to relax and do the things that you want to do, as we said, rather than spending your time working. And Dorothy Walker from our Facebook group, she said, you're never too old to grow. I found that when I was younger, doing art was stressful and therefore exhausting. I was never satisfied and I'd give up when I wasn't working. And, or rather when it wasn't working. In the three years since retiring, I've replaced my addiction to work, wine, TV and counting my steps and other potentially harmful habits with creativity. One of my kids says he's glad I've gone a bit mad, but in a good way. My live out other half of 30 years has always tried to encourage me to be more creative and now the time is right for me. My grown up kids say I'm more chilled out and they're happy to eat slow cooker meals, leaving me time to ponder and create, which has also made me a more invented cook. Win win. Brilliant. 
And like you were saying about the groups, I mean, art is a very social thing. If you go out to a group, the good thing is you meet different people, which are, I think is great if you're older, because I think it's harder to make friends when you're older. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, you haven't got the old school thing or the college thing where you're automatically meeting people. And like you, when I went to a workshop, about two thirds of the people there were probably of retirement age. And one woman actually said to me that she only ever paints when she goes to these workshops. So for her, it's definitely much as much about the social aspect, I would say, as about actually doing the art, you know, because she doesn't do it at home. And nobody minded what level anyone was at at you know they were all happy to offer advice so you could have gone along there as a complete beginner and no one would have been you know horrible to you they'd have just encouraged you and help you and I think sometimes we perceive things differently to what they are really like too like you were saying how everybody expects an artist to be this young hip person and how they're probably more likely to be older because they've got more time I mean I remember it's, it's very different but kind of similar in a way that when I was 45, I really fancied trying martial arts. Um, so I, I don't laugh, but I messaged um, one, a couple of groups and I said, you know, I'd love to come and try it, but I'm not sure if I'm too old. And the guy goes, no, no, that age is absolutely fine. Come along. And I went and I, I did it for a couple of years. But the funny thing was, the majority of people were either my age or older. There was there were some people, you know, in the 40s, one thing late 30s, and then a couple in their 60s. So, you know, it definitely wasn't what I had in my head, which was these young 20-year-olds. Yeah, now I would have thought like five or six-year-olds <laughs> doing karate. Yeah, they, they got a kid's class, but I didn't, they got an adult's <laughs> class as well, which I deliberately avoided the kid's class. You know, I'm not a kid person. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you would have enjoyed being their opponent. <laughs> no, my my little grandson does it. It's where he just got his first belt. Oh yeah, I didn't want to do the belts because if you did the belts, you had to go along with the kids. I did want the first belt, but you're there and there's like three adults to try and doing their right. belts, yeah. and there's about thirty children, and I'm standing next to a <laughs> child who's about waist height. <laughs> And it would be so embarrassing, wouldn't it, if they got their belt and you didn't get well, yours? Well, they don't get to the time, but of course, all their parents are standing there watching. <laughs> yeah. That's not oh. my idea of fun. But you said earlier, didn't you, that people are living so much longer, aren't they, nowadays? So don't assume you've left it too late. It's just never too late, you know whether you want to take something really seriously or just have fun and live a creative life if it interests you just do it because you'll never know what it lead, you know can lead to and think about that man I spoke about earlier the one that started at 92 and then sorry 90 and then got into a gallery at 92 you know at 89 he probably had no clue that he could possibly ever do that you know most people would think well I've left it way too late but it just goes to prove that you you really don't know what it could lead to yeah, so we had Cheryl Martin. When we asked the question, are you ever too old to do art? She said, no, I really only started a year ago at 59, though I always have done art projects for my kids and grandkids. And Erica Bettant, she says, never too old. Learning is for life and not just for school, which I think we often forget no matter what the subject. And then we've got Christy C. Neff. And she says, I'm 57 and just started. Hmm, I feel like one of the youngest ones here in art years. And I'm thinking it must be like dog years now. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> ben King, he says, I have just recently got the artist itch and I'm enjoying drawing, sketching, doodling, etc. There are times I regret not picking it up sooner, though. Ben must be American because he actually said, I've just recently gotten the artist itch. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done it in American accent, yeah, go on, shouldn't then. I? <laughs> I can't do an American accent. I can do, I can do Australian. <laughs> Right. Go on then, yeah, carry okay. on. Don't don't get me started. Okay. We've got Drew B artist and he says, Nope, nope, and thrice nope. I wanted to be a cartoonist from the age of five. Got bored of conventional art at eighteen and became a musician. Didn't touch a pen or anything again for fourteen years. Gonna be forty next year. Yikes. That's quite positively <laughs> young, that is. Yes, yeah, it really is. Um I've got Andrea or sorry, Andrea England Art, which is an Instagram name. 
Uh, during my teens, I was always drawing, but I stopped in my early 20s. I felt like I didn't have enough time due to my workload as a teacher. And when I did take time to create, the pressure I put on myself was so huge that it felt like a frustrating waste of time when it all went wrong. I put my paints and brushes away and a decade later pulled out my old A-level artwork when visiting my parents. It looked so much better than I remembered. And mum bought me a sketchbook for my birthday and I started sketching again as my husband and I sailed around South East Asia and I felt like I'd regained a part of myself that I'd lost. I kept creating when I went back to work, discovered sketchbook school, which was a huge source of inspiration, and now sketch or paint every single day. And I'm realising my long forgotten dream of becoming a professional artist at the age of 40. So it's never too late to start learning how to make art or to pick up your tools again if you've given up. Now, you know, to me, yeah, she sort of says, oh, you know, at the age of 40, it's never too late. If she'd have done exactly the same thing at the age of 60 or 70, she'd still be, she'd still have the same outcome. Yeah, it doesn't matter, you know does I mean? it? doesn't so. matter. Yeah. We've got Artist Strong, that's her Instagram name. She says, gosh, this keeps coming up in my space too. Like, this is Carrie and she's got her, her own uh, Facebook group. She says, I constantly oh. use Grandma Moses as an example. 78 when she made her first painting and exhibited well into her 90s. And we've got Nia Kate Edmund. She says, you cannot be too old or too young for art. And I, Quite yeah, and I've got Cheryl Kugler Art. As a creative ageing teaching artist, now she says that, not me, no one is ever too old to create. Agree with what I said as above, age has nothing to do with it. And now, I don't know how to pronounce Shehorb. Is it Shehorb, another Instagram so. name? Or is yeah, uh, this is quite possibly my biggest issue. I wanted to be a fine artist in the magical realism genre and I realised that I would probably never actually be very good at it because I have no talent and I'm starting so late in life. Now it's just imposter syndrome every time I make something. That inner critic is on fire in my head. Do you know, she's not alone. Well, she's she? definitely got that talent inner... as well because I've seen some of her stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, that inner critic, though, can be such a nightmare. But we did an episode on how to kick your inner critic's butt. So I reckon, um, Shahorv, you need to go back and have a listen Definitely. to that. Okay, I've got Paint Girl 211. Did not take my first steps towards creating painting and drawings until the age of 41 with the support of my late husband. While I had always been creative, my early adult efforts have been directed more towards practical forms such as cooking, gardening, sewing and painting the house. I took a small hiatus after his death, but I've returned to it and it's become a major part of my self-identity. At times I still feel like a noob, but I've learned so much in the seven years since my fledgling attempts. I know I'm following the right path when I see pride in my loved one's faces after I reveal a new piece. Oh, that's really yeah. lovely. Evelyn Oil... Evelyn Oldroid Painting, another Instagram name. Not sure why people think age has anything to do with creativity and the artistry. We agree, so yeah. So I'm going to end as I started and categorically confirm that no, it's never too late to start making art or writing a novel or sculpting or whatever. And in fact, there are tons of really good reasons why you should. So just go for it. We're now going to read out the answers to our previous question, which was, you're allowed to draw only one more thing in your lifetime. What would it be? Now, I wasn't quite sure when you said this, if you're only allowed to draw the same thing over and over again or just one thing. Makes no difference, though, does it? Well, it does, because can I just draw one face on a page or can I draw loads and loads of different faces? Oh, no, no, just one. Oh, right, I don't okay. know. Oh, yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah. Let's make the let's make the rules now. Too late. Everyone's <laughs> answered already. Uh, yeah, Sarah, Sarah Grace. She says a really large in capitals, very intricate Zentangle art piece should take me a very long time to finish it. Very I, good idea. I've got Emma Cavill. And she says my life. Then I can draw everything around me, including my family and my day to day life. I think Emma might be cheating. I think she might be as well. <laughs> So should we disqualify Emma for yeah, that one? Emma, yeah. you're disqualified. Sorry, Emma. <laughs> I've got flies and skulls. These Instagram names really make me laugh. She said, oh, no. Oh, no. It's not it's an Instagram Fliss name. Flies and skulls are Fliss my favourite. skulls, isn't it? Fliss and skulls? Fli what? Flies and <laughs> I don't know, but she says, oh, my favourite things to draw. Oh, no. Oh, maybe, oh if I missed out the gap, it should be Fliss and. <laughs> Fliss and. <laughs> My apologies. Apologies, Flissan. 
oh i see fliss hands the name <laughs> yeah. and skulls is the object yeah, yeah. I thought <laughs> I thought it was Instagram. Flies and skulls. Okay, flies. right, sorry. I'm just writing a little note. Must check Tara's punctuation <laughs> for next episode. Flissan says, Skites, <laughs> skulls are my favourite thing to draw. One of the few things I no longer need reference for. Ooh, I would definitely need reference for that. Yeah, me They're too. They're really complicated, aren't they? It's, it's slightly scary that she must have loads of skulls around our house. Oh. Since she's just using pictures. Mm, well, let's I hope, hope so. it's pictures, yeah. I mean, it would be pretty hard to get hold of a skull, wouldn't it? I don't know. I suppose you get plastic ones. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Right, Bianca Blueberry, I do like that name. I think that's her real name. I yeah. don't know, but no. I like it. Yeah. I think I would draw a portrait of me or someone else because drawing portraits isn't my biggest strength. It would last forever until it's perfect or at least until I'm satisfied with the result. I want to be called Sandra Strawberry. <laughs> I'll call you that from now on then. <laughs> Drew Bristow, probably a cat. My motto, when in doubt, draw cats. I'm not a cat person. I'm a dog person. Me too. I always, I always think when I see a cat, it's going to scratch my eyeballs out. Yeah. I just maybe. don't trust them. Mm. I've got Sarah Elio, and she also says cats. Just received a great Secret Santa present of a book called Doodling for Cat Lovers. Do you know, my friend, I, she's a cat person, and I said to her one day, why do you like cats over dogs? And she said, because dogs just love you all the time and just want you to be with them. She said, but when a cat comes next to you and sort of sits on your lap for a stroke, she said, I just feel like, you know, you've got to be really, really grateful because they just don't like you in general. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to be, and I thought, no, I don't, I don't understand that at all. No. <laughs> but my dog doesn't want fuss all the time. He's not like that at all. Well, no, Sherlock doesn't, but every time we walk past him, he flops onto his back with his legs in yeah. the air and wags his tail, so, yeah. The ass, no, I prefer dogs. Yeah. We're going to lose 50% of the listeners now, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to lose now, the aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Then I have got James Penn Wiggins, who says, flowers, they make people smile. Yeah, they do. You can send me some flowers anytime. Oh, that, there's a lot. I'll tell you what, we had a lot of answers. We did have we? a lot that's of answers, not, yeah. That's not even all of them by far. Um but anyway, we have got a brand new question now to be read out. Yeah, and we oh, don't use one of our own, do we? We've got to <laughs> use one of our groups. This is a question suggested by Deb Sane, who is an artist in our Facebook group. And she says, if you could create with two famous creatives, one living, the other dead, who would they be and why? And as always, you can tweet us your answers at Kick Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, I suggest you do. Uh, we'll also put the question up there and on the Facebook page and also on Instagram, which is Kicking the Creatives. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickingthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our up and coming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. So now it's time for us, I suppose, to pretend to say goodbye when the reality is we'll probably be still talking in half an hour. <laughs> you probably will, but here's that pretend goodbye from me for now. Bye. Bye. Are you still there? Yes, you are. I I'm still here. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. than you though oh no maybe not talk okay what do you want me to say oh yeah i think we're about right it's yeah probably better yeah okay. so basically it's all your fault all <laughs> although you are you do need turning up if you know what i mean because <laughs> you always seem so quiet so I much need turning on <laughs> not not in a kinky way <laughs> i meant in a not snoozy way <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> don't, don't put that on the envelope, please. <laughs> Would I? <laughs>